when I was mentoring junior developers, I receive a lot of questions on which they can easily find the answers on their own. In full honesty, I also didn't know the answer to the majority of their questions, but I still answered them anyway because I am more experienced with these three basic steps that I would like to share with you. With enough patience and time teaching them these skills, they managed to stand on their own and no longer needed my assistance that much. So here we go, number one, reading documentation. Ain't nobody got time for that. But seriously, you should have time for reading documentation. Being a senior developer now, half of my job is actually reading and writing documentations. When I was a junior developer, I was so eager to just code that I wasn't really reading the documentation. I just scroll through it so quickly as if I am the fastest reader in the world. I used to keep asking my senior as well before and that he got annoyed and sometimes he won't answer my questions with a simple answer. He just sent me a link of the documentation and says that I just need to read it and yeah I got the message he taught me to read docs that way it's because when I was a junior developer I think a lot of you guys would relate to this all I wanted to do was just code because it's fun especially when you solve problems and if the code fails I'll just do another set of trial and errors when in fact the solution or the best way to implement what I was trying to achieve at the time was written in the documentations I also believe it has a lot to do with the way I learned coding. For someone like me who learned through a lot of YouTube tutorials and Udemy courses, I somehow forgot to rely on written documentation and just go straight to YouTube or Udemy trying to look for answers or maybe in Stack Overflow. But when I actually started learning how to read documentations and got into the habit of reading it, that's when I realized that it actually takes less time to find the answer in the documentation rather than going to YouTube or Stack Overflow or trying to search the answers in Google. And the way you improve this skill is by repetition. Just read the documentations of the programming language you're currently using or maybe the framework you're using. And the second one would be debugging. Debugging is a very important skill that needs to be honed as soon as possible because being a developer means that you'll have to deal with a lot of bugs on a daily basis. So how do you as a developer actually improve your debugging skills? One would be by reading the errors and understanding what this different error means because most of the time the error is detailed enough to give you an idea what's wrong. And also shift that mindset that the computer is wrong. It's us, the developers, who are causing the errors, not the computer. Also, being skillful in the process of elimination is a good way to debug. This way, you'll have an idea which part of the code is wrong and not working. And since you know which part of the code is the problem, then you can now begin to find a proper solution for it. I guess so one analogy I could say is that imagine having a headache. Would you take stomach medicine to cure it? No, right? You'll go to your local shaman to fix it. I'm just kidding. Obviously, you'll have to use foot powder. So once you know which part of the code is wrong, you can now activate your eagle eye and go through that part of code line by line. And most of the time, it's just a misspelled variable or maybe a lacking uh, dot or a semicolon. And yeah, practice debugging and this will make you a very exceptional developer. Third one is Google Foo, which is the art of googling simple as that and also learning the tech jargon learning the jargon and what to search on google is an important skill because once you get a job you'll most likely be alone trying to figure things out with just google by your side here's a story when i was mentoring a junior dev he asked me for help on an error that he couldn't solve and can't seem to figure out why he was getting that error understandably it's not a big deal because it was just his six month on the job. So I went and checked on him. At first glance, I already knew the solution for the error, but I was curious and asked him what methods he tried to solve it. And then he said that he had been already in Google searching for about an hour and still couldn't get a proper answer. So I got into his computer, checked the tabs, and there were a lot of Google searches. I couldn't help but smirk at the things he has been, that he has been searching for, like how to divide array and then put new item inside. It's quite vague and even 
if he asked me that question directly, I wouldn't know the answer to it. So maybe he, if you learned more of the jargon, he could say replace a specific element in an array. My tip to improve your Google for abilities is to do the first step and that is to read the documentation. Reading the docs for the programming you're currently using or the framework you're currently using is going to help you be accustomed to jargon and terms being used in programming because programming is full of jargons and technical terms so as soon as possible it's better to be accustomed to these terms learning tech jargons will also improve the way you communicate with other developers once you are in a team and it will help you especially when there are senior developers in your team who no longer speak in basic english and just speak in terms of programming jargon and technical words yeah so those are the three things that a lot of beginners miss and one is reading documentation two would be the the skill of debugging three would be mastering their google foo or their skill in googling stuff and yeah if you learned something from this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe consider subscribing it shows my big nose into other people's homepage on youtube and i will appreciate it a lot thank you very much that's it see ya